Hello everyone and welcome to the Retro Hobby YouTube channel. My name is Mitchell and today I'm going to show you how I've installed this larger racing wheel on my Logitech G29. A couple of reasons I wanted to do this is one, it's larger, it's more realistic, more lifelike to what would be in an actual car. The one that comes out of the box with the G29 is a little small, almost feels like it's a toy versus um, an actual racing car. And then also I really just wanted to keep progressing my DIY setup a little bit more. You can see it's not exactly a professional rig, uh, but it looks, it, it gets the job done. Let's, let's put it that way. So we'll continue to make improvements. Hopefully we continue to document them. But here's step one. This particular set of parts that I grabbed and used to put the larger wheel on um, that did require some 3D printing. I'll link to the files down below or to the website where I found this down below and you can print your own. I did follow just their recommended settings on the print so I didn't go crazy there. You know you gotta you got force them together just a little bit which is actually kind of nice to have that extra kind of grip feel to it. it. Makes it feel a little bit more secure um, but so far it's it's worked really well. I've, I've had it together for about a week and I am very happy with it so Follow along step by step with me here and I will show you how I installed everything. So here you can see the original G29, um, you know it works just fine as it is, I have no complaints with that really, but I did want something a little bit larger, as you can see this one is uh, quite a bit larger. It looks larger right there in the video than you know, it, it actually is. It's only about you know a wheel's width different, um, so the inside of the new one basically sits on the outside of the original one so it's but it, it, it is a noticeable difference and it is nice that you get that little bit extra wheel to it and of course we're adding extra parts to this so we're gonna need some extra hardware so I'll put a list down below of the hardware that I used in this video so that you can also follow along with that and have everything you need up front okay so let's get started on the actual disassembly here uh, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the back side of the wheel. This works a lot better if you have your wheel strapped down to something pretty solid. That way it's not trying to move on you quite so much. Uh, but you're just going to take all of the screws out of the back side of the little plastic housing uh, that has all the buttons and everything on there. So the second thing you're going to do is you're going to grab your Allen key and you're gonna to go to the front of the steering wheel and you're gonna take the six Allen hex keys, whatever you wanna call them, off the front and that should uh, loosen everything up so that you will be able to take the whole thing apart. So the next step is just pull the wheel off. There's a wire that's holding it to the rest of the base. Go ahead and pull that out but from there you should be able to get to the last couple screws that are holding like the L2 and the R2 bumpers on and then you can go ahead and take that entire board off of the back side of your plastic there. Then after you get the board out there's again a couple more screws that are just hidden back behind the board that you have to you know take it step by step and get to uh, but these last two is what's going to remove the front plate from the original G29 steering wheel and now that you've got all the pieces back apart you can go ahead and reattach the PCB to the front part of the housing. Next up you can go ahead and get the paddles out of the rear housing as well as take the rear housing off of the uh, rest of the base. There are four screws attaching the paddles to the back housing and then I believe there were three screws that were holding the housing onto the actual hub of the base. And with those last parts removed, the disassembly is completed. There you can see everything all spread out on the ground ready to go back together. Finally, we get into our 3D printed pieces as you can see here. You have to thread the uh, cord with the hookup back through that little tiny hole. I had to kind of pinch it sideways to feed it in there nicely. And then from there, you're just installing your screws uh, through. I mean, it's 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 pretty self-explanatory, but reattach it with the screws right here. You can see it wanted to keep 
turning and turning and turning. So eventually I just turned it all the way. And uh, yeah, that makes it so it doesn't spin on you every time you twist your wrist. Then after you get that back piece connected, you can grab the front piece and your wheel and go ahead and sandwich the wheel in between the back and the front. I tried using the six bolts that came with the steering wheel first and they didn't quite line up right. I shouldn't say they didn't line up right. It seemed like they were not very well produced and they didn't want to consistently screw in one. I could barely get the hex key in the next, it wouldn't turn it because it was too loose. So I just went ahead and got some regular screws that I had laying around and used those instead. In the end, this part doesn't matter what hardware you use because you will not see this part. It's a little interesting. Uh, I expected this was going to have to be seen. So I was thinking about, you know, maybe I want to paint these ahead of time, but you really don't need to because you're not going to see them at all. And here's what it's going to look like on your paddle shifters. This is the correct way to attach these so that, and this is just an extender so that you can still use them. Otherwise they're going to be tucked so far back behind the wheel that you're never going to be able to actually reach them. But yeah, they just sit back behind just like that. You screw the front plate on and that front part is what is going to connect into the actual control center of the wheel, if you want to call it that, and uh, make flip that switch that the original paddle just did on its own. But since we're moving it, more pieces to get it a little closer. And personally, I felt like that was the trickiest part of the entire uh, build. This other part was, wasn't was tricky so much, it was a little bit annoying. Again, you have to feed that wire through, and then you have to get the 3D printed bumpers through the grooves on the backside there, and they were just, just a little bit tight. It could be different with your 3D print. They could be loose going in there, I don't know. But mine were a little bit tight, so I had to do a little bit of forcing, a little bit of wiggling, but eventually I got them in, got them screwed down, and it was a good feeling when that happened because it was not the easiest one to get to right away. So then of course, just like when we were undoing everything, as you redo it, you kind of go in a backwards order. So make sure that you get the paddles put in, then you need to screw the back housing onto the hub. Or actually it's on the front of, yeah, the front of the wheel plated to the mount of the back hub that's connected to the base. You get what I'm saying. Basically you need to put those four screws or three screws back into the wheel so that everything can go back together. And now that we have all that back together, you can go ahead and put the front plate back on with the PCB attached. Make sure you do that ahead of time. And make sure you also have all the buttons that you need to get to attached as well. So your L2 and R2 buttons, uh, make sure those are there because without it, it's gonna be a bit of a pain. So <laughs> make sure you have everything attached that you need to. But from there, you get the backside screws put on just like we took them off. You go ahead and get to the front and put the four, or sorry, the six uh, hex keys back on with your Allen wrench and you're done. Congratulations. You now have a larger steering wheel on your G29 and you also still have access to all of your buttons and your paddle shifters. Go ahead and get yourself some gummy bears, a celebration or a high five or something like that. Whatever you need to make yourself feel good. Even though this wheel is going to make you feel good enough as it is. So yeah, initial impressions guys is that it feels a lot nicer, feels a lot larger. Makes me feel like I'm a little bit more in a car than before. Um, it will take a little bit of getting used to for sure. But another thing I did notice that I'm going to have to mess with some force feedback settings maybe a little bit. These wheels don't have the most power anyway from what I am told. So, you know, maybe if you have it turned down a little bit, maybe turn it back up. There are some programs that, you know, can kind of help with force feedback settings and things like that. And it all comes down to personal preference anyway. But maybe you need to turn it up just a little bit more because this wheel is larger it is heavier it's gonna need a little bit more power to turn it at the same way it did the small one so you might look into that a little bit but all in all 
I'm so happy I did it. Like I said, I've I had it about a week now, and it's. I'm, I'm very glad that I spent the time to get everything printed and get the hardware and put it all together. It's one of those projects that, you know, it sat next to me at my desk for a week before I ever started it, but I wish I wouldn't have waited, you know, five minutes after getting it. But that is all for me today. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, be sure to click the like button. If you'd like to see more content like this or check out one of our other series we have going on out on our Retro Hobby channel, give us a subscribe, go check things out. Leave a comment if I did anything wrong or if you have any better suggestions for anyone. But until next time, guys, see ya.